first of all, I want to say uh, in our announcements, next, so be ready, next Sunday, we'll be back to Sunday School Training Union, uh, full services and everything, so be, be ready, be prepared, uh, set them alarm clocks an hour early, uh, so we can get ready for uh, Sunday School again, so um, I want to say this, if you uh, know of anybody or hadn't seen anybody in a while, Give them a shout or a ring. Let them know about uh, Sunday school starting back next next sun, Sunday morning. So you be ready. You be ready and be prepared for that. Don't forget also um, uh, business meeting coming this Wednesday uh, night. We'll have a um, uh, council meeting right after that um, Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. The WMU the, or anybody. They'd like to meet uh, here at the church for a prayer walk. Uh, you can do that on Wednesday uh, morning at 9 a.m. Don't forget the Super Singles will meet this coming Saturday at 4.30 at um, Judy's house. So if uh, you need information of how to get there or know anybody that would like to come, just please let them get with Judy and she'll... she'll Yes. Not bring drinks. Carolyn's oh. taking care of the drinks. So. Okay, so don't need drinks, Carolyn. Don't need oh. drinks. Uh, did you just find that out, Carolyn? No, okay. she, she <laughs> corrected me this morning. <laughs> I told you I'd bring drinks. No. <laughs> I Carolyn looked, she looked at Judy like, I didn't say that. <laughs> Don't forget also, um, looking forward to our joint service this year uh, with the other churches So for Thanksgiving, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, if you can, please come to the business meeting on Wednesday. We're going to have a council meeting after that, so we got some other things we want to talk about in there as well. So it would be good to have everyone here that could. Any Is that Thanksgiving service together going to be on Tuesday before? Yes. like it used to be. Yes, just like it used to be. Yes, I don't, I'd have to get my phone to look at the date, but it is, it is that Tuesday just as normal. And it's at Cagless Chapel. Scott Lincolnfelter's preaching. Anyone with prayer requests or praises before we get started? Daddy told me that Gerald Thompson that we went to school with years ago had a stroke. Please remember this. Anyone else? Gone back to emergency room because they is having leg pain. It's me. So it's worse. He's having leg pain. Remember Matt in your prayers. Anyone else? Remember Mary's unspoken request? My sister's been yeah. having pain. Mm -hmm. The doctors couldn't find, and now they found a problem. I remember JD's sister in your prayers. Anyone else? Unspoken request. Remember these. Anyone else? Yes, remember this. I've got some unspoken requests. I asked you to pray for them. Um, I want to say tonight, and I've said it many, many times. I'm thankful for the answered prayers that God's given me, not not just in the last, my lifetime, but, you know, God's answered prayers in the last week, and I'm thankful for that. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that uh, we have a Lord that hears our prayers, and he has the ability to act on them. So anyone else with a request or praise before we get started? Tonight, as we came to church, I drove along the road just looking at the skies and there was this gorgeous glow from the sunset and then up in the sky was the crescent moon with the evening star just up from me. I worshiped the whole way to church and just praised God that he created such beautiful things for all of us. Mm -hmm. And it was just a pure blessing just to drive to church tonight. Yes. And I just thank God for that. Yes. You know, God has a way of doing things that man cannot duplicate. I had a friend of mine, he worked uh, for the city of Maryville, and 
I, don't, I may have told this before, I don't remember, but uh, they were working in the creek or making a creek or something, and he said that um, they were given the task, you know, to make it, make it look and sound like uh, it, just, it was there by nature. He said they, they took rocks and they, they tried to arrange them a certain way and tried to put them this way. And he said, he said, we worked on that thing and worked on it and worked on it. And he said, the one thing we figured out, he said, we wasn't God. We weren't able to take them rocks and put them in a certain way to make them sound right. He said, we never did get that, that, that area to sound uh, like it does in the mountains. And, you know, there's things that God does that, that we just stand in awe sometimes. And only God can do that. The be- only thing that man can do, man can uh, paint a picture of it. Or man can, and can recreate, try his best to recreate it. But he can't create like God can. Anyone else? I'm the scientist <coughs> that I can do anything that God can. Mm-mm. And uh, he got some dirt and put it up on the table line. And uh, he made something. God said, no, that's mine. <laughs> that dirt. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. mine. Anyone else? Chris. Building a few boxes online. It is now up and running. If you just Google uh, Operation Christmas Child Shoe Box, uh, it'll bring up to where you can build the shoe box online. You just type in the name of the church, and it'll pull it right up at the very bottom. Yes. And if anybody uh, has any issues or any questions about it, you can come see me afterwards, and I can show you how to do it. Okay. So if you want to do your shoe box, and we've done that last year, I believe, online too. So if you want to build your shoe box online, I think. Uh, some of the people that done that last year said it was real uh, easy and, and, and quick to do. So so just see, Chris, if you have any issues with that. Box, I noticed. So. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so maybe we need to get online and do some shoe boxes. So, so And also don't forget, if you have a shoe box and you bring one back, you know, uh, uh, please, please if, you, if you can, please give $9 per box. So we, that takes care of the shipping for that as well. I asked Brother Mike. If you'd lead us in prayer, please. <clears throat> Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for all these blessings. We thank you for the beauty you let us look at and enjoy of your creation. Lord, we just thank you for being able to come to church tonight. And Lord, just help us with this COVID that we'll get over it. And Lord, that Our churches will all be back in full force. We ask you to be at Allen tonight. Just give him the words you want us to hear. And Lord, just be at all these requests. All these things we ask in our name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight and you want to follow along with us, we'll be in Romans chapter number 4. Romans chapter 4. So please, if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along, Romans chapter for tonight Romans chapter 4 we'll start reading in verse 18 and we'll read down into chapter 5 as well Romans chapter 4 starting in verse 18 who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was uh, about a hundred years old, neither yet the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through the unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded... That what he had promised, he was also, he was, sorry, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written in, uh, for his sake alone, for it was imputed to him. But for us also, uh, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believed on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead, who, had, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. I want you to notice this, this next verse. Therefore, being justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer tonight, thanking you, Lord, for your blessings. Thanking you, Lord, for the answered prayers. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person, every family, every home God that's represented here tonight. Lord, as we pray, we, uh, Lord, we just pray that if there's uh, anyone, God, that has a need in their life, anyone, uh, Lord, that struggles, anyone that uh, may be lost tonight, uh, Lord, that, that, that in this scripture, Lord, they can find hope, they can find help. That, God, that they can find peace. Lord, as we uh, pray tonight, we just pray for uh, this church. We pray, God, for our community, Lord. We pray, God, for so many people, God, that are struggling. Lord, there's so many needs around each and every person and each and every home and each and every family, God, that surround us on a daily basis. God, we pray uh, tonight that if there's someone, God, that's seeking uh, peace or they're seeking, God, help or whatever it may be, Lord, that they would just surrender themselves unto you. Lord, we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, tonight, as we look in the scripture here tonight, uh, our thoughts are really going to come out of chapter uh, 5 and verse 1, but we wanted to go back and read a little bit of out of chapter 4. And uh, chapter 4 is dealing with uh, Abraham and his... Um, uh, as it dealt with being justified and uh, he is uh, being a hundred years old and ha and Sarah, uh, her womb that uh, was barren, but yet when the Lord touched her uh, her life, uh, you know, they conceived a child uh, at, a, at an older age. And uh, it talks about uh, uh, this uh, righteousness in verse 22. It says, therefore, it was imputed to him uh, for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone uh, that it was imputed to him. Uh, and it says, but for us also to whom it shall uh, be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord uh, from the dead. Now uh, tonight as we look in the scriptures and, uh, and looking at the uh, what we have read tonight, our thoughts tonight will be this. Uh, it's, it, it's in verse 1. It says, we have peace with God. Now, I want you to think about that for just a moment. That is, a, uh, that is just a few words that means so much uh, to so many people. Uh, I can remember, um, uh, you know, throughout my life that uh, sometimes when a person... Uh, gets a bad, uh, uh, I guess what you call bad news from the doctor, or somebody has figured out they don't have uh, long to live. Uh, a, a phrase that gets, I guess, that gets mentioned or used sometimes is somebody will tell or they'll tell you that uh, they are at peace with God. Or if you ever heard somebody uh, give somebody advice in such a time, and they may say this: "You need you need to make peace with God." I, I've 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 witnessed and seen that said. I've witnessed and heard people say that many many times uh, in the ministry. I, there's been many times when uh, you go to someone's house and. Uh, the, it, it, listen, the outcome does not look good. Uh, you go in and you start to talk with someone and they'll tell you, say, preacher, I'm at peace with God. I've made everything right. And you know, uh, that, that is a good place to be in, is to be at peace uh, uh, with God. Now, uh, just, for some, uh, just for some things tonight uh, that we want to share with you is this. Uh, uh, you, these are some, I guess, definitions. I like looking up definitions and, and gathering thoughts that other people uh, may have or say about a certain subject. And, and one of them is this, uh, uh, without peace, uh, uh, these are just uh, uh, definitions and things that I found 
in studies as without peace, uh, uh, there's hostility. And we all know that uh, without peace, there could be uh, turmoil. There could be uh, trouble. There could be strife. Uh, uh, there could be differences. Uh, uh, there could be war. And we know that uh, that uh, it doesn't take you long to turn the news on and you find that where some country's fighting or somebody, uh, uh, they're desiring uh, peace talks or desiring uh, some way to settle a, a conflict in that. Uh, but yet, we were looking tonight at the peace that God uh, gives and offers to you and I. But the most important thing about that peace, uh, it only comes through one person. It only comes uh, in one flavor. You know, uh, we were talking about uh, shopping this morning. Uh, it's amazed at all. Hey, if you've not ever tried to buy ice cream, go into the, the store and look at all those different flavors uh, of ice cream that there is. I mean, they've got everything. Uh, that, that you could imagine for ice cream. Uh, uh, Kyle brought some home the other day. I believe it was peanut butter and jelly ice cream. I, I've never thought of such a thing. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, when it comes to peace with God, uh, there's only one choice. There's only one flavor. And you know, when you say, preacher, what is that? It is Jesus Christ. That's the only way uh, that a person can have a true peace in this life. Now, I was thinking about this I can remember in my own life uh, uh, before I met Jesus and that uh, there was a lot of uh, trouble there was a lot of strife there was a lot of fear there was a lot of things uh, uh, going on in my mind uh, and in my heart but the instant uh, uh, that moment in time that that I met Jesus and that he settled everything uh, and there was a peace that just it just uh, it just overwhelmed me in that no one that uh, things between me and God uh, are now right. Now, there's a few things uh, uh, that when you begin to read in the book of Romans, uh, uh, you'll find that uh, in the beginning here, when it starts talking, uh, when they start getting into the meat uh, uh, of the scripture in that, uh, Paul's writing, and he's talking to them about sin. He's talking to them about making it right with God, uh, uh, the punishments of sin. Uh, but yet, when he gets to chapter 4 uh, and gets into verse 5, uh, he starts talking about uh, being able to have peace with God. Uh, now think about this for a moment. Uh, a person that has trouble in their life. Uh, you say, preacher, what are they desiring? Uh, uh, they're desiring uh, peace. Uh, uh, you talk about a country uh, uh, that's just full of turmoil uh, and full of wars and things. Uh, uh, you say, preacher, uh, what could settle that country? Uh, uh, what could get them going in the right direction? Uh, it's peace in that. Uh, and you say, preacher, Preacher, how uh, does peace come? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I, was, I said this in my prayer. Uh, uh, you know what? When peace comes, uh, uh, surrender has to happen. Uh, and you say, Preacher, uh, who are you surrendering to? Uh, uh, we're surrendering uh, uh, to the one and only, uh, the true and living God. Uh, and now listen. I was thinking about this. Uh, you go back uh, and you read the history of wars. Uh, and when you know what? When a country uh, uh, would surrender to the, uh, the other country uh, or countries that won. Uh, uh, you know what? There was an article that was drawn out. Uh, and they would have things in there. Uh, uh, declarations of things they could do. Uh, and things not to do. Uh, and these were the conditions of, of peace and surrender. Uh, and the surrendering country. Uh, uh, their authority in charge uh, uh, would sign his name uh, and you know what he was doing uh, he was accepting those terms uh, and I was thinking about this uh, I'm glad uh, that not only did I accept the terms uh, of peace with God uh, uh, but God accepted them as well uh, you say preacher uh, it's one sided no it's two sided uh, uh, think about this turn with me uh, to uh, Romans chapter 1 tonight and verse 18 and notice uh, what Paul says um, he said this uh, for the wrath of God uh, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men uh, who hold the truth uh, in unrighteousness uh, uh, because that which may be known of God uh, is manifest in them for God hath showed it 
unto them. So we see, first of all, there's a separation between man and God, between mankind and God. And you say, preacher, what caused that separation? It was sin. It was man's sin. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they caused a separation between their walk and fellowship with God. But you know this, God sent His only begotten Son so that we could have peace with God. And the Bible says with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into His grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now think about this. Our peace tonight, it come at a great cost. We say this and it's well known around our country. In our country we are a free nation and we have a free nation but it costs thousands and thousands of lives to be a free nation men and women died in battles to pray to pay the price for our freedom tonight men and women have served around the world for years and years in wars and serving the country to die for our peace but when it comes comes with peace with God uh, uh, there was only one that could die uh, that would have eternal peace uh, and that was his Lord Je- uh, his son excuse me, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and notice this, uh, I was thinking about uh, uh, what happens uh, when you have peace with God. Uh, uh, you know what, there's many uh, characteristics that fall into that. Uh, and you say, preacher, uh, what do you get? First of all, uh, uh, you get unity. Uh, and you know what, it brings back uh, a relationship uh, between man and God. Uh, I don't know about you tonight. Uh, I, you know what, I'm glad I have this. I've got a relationship with my wife. I've got a relationship with my family and my kids. We have a relationship here in the church, in our church family. But I'm thankful tonight for that relationship with God. Because you know, we're just here for a little bit and then we're gone. Family may leave. A church may leave. Somebody could go off somewhere. But God is always right there. Uh, when you need him. Uh, think about this. Uh, there is security uh, uh, having peace with God. Uh, and you say, preacher, uh, what kind of security is it? Uh, is it an alarm system? Uh, is it a guard? Uh, it's much more better than that. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, it's Jesus Christ uh, uh, living right with you. Uh, you say, preacher, what else uh, uh, that comes uh, with having peace with God? Uh, uh, joy, uh, uh, happiness. Uh, you know what you, you say preacher uh, you're talking about fruits of the spirit absolutely uh, uh, that's what we get uh, when we have peace with God uh, uh, what about this uh, uh, what about having faith uh, and trusting him uh, uh, notice what it says here uh, he says uh, being justified uh, uh, by faith uh, we have peace uh, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, think about this. Uh, in order to get to that place, uh, a person has to uh, uh, surrender under the calling of God. Uh, I was thinking about uh, uh, this scripture, and as I was reading it, uh, I don't know about you, uh, but in my Bible, in the one I've got, uh, in the, the first word uh, that's mentioned in chapter 5 and verse 1, uh, every letter in therefore is capitalized. Uh, I don't know if yours is, but mine is. Uh, and you say, Hey, preacher, uh, why is all of those letters uh, uh, being uh, 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 capitalized? Uh, it's because he is, uh, he's making a statement. Uh, he's making a declaration. Uh, he's wanting everybody to know uh, uh, that we have peace tonight uh, and it comes through God. I wrote this down too. The one of the things that comes with peace through God is rest. Is rest. You know, the things of life can get us all turned upside down sometimes. Have you ever noticed that? The cares of the world can just get everything in your life all out of place. I like saying it like it gets it out of whack, all right? It just gets it going in all different directions. 
But ain't it amazing that when everything comes into order, uh, when God becomes first, uh, ain't it amazing at the peace that a person has? Uh, ain't it amazing at the rest uh, that they get in their life? Uh, I'm not just talking about sleep. Uh, I'm talking about a peaceful rest. Uh, uh, knowing if something were to ever happen, uh, uh, that you would be all right with God. Uh, uh, notice this. Uh, the Bible says this in Romans 3 and 23. Uh, it says, For all have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God, uh, uh, being justly uh, uh, justified uh, uh, freely by His grace uh, uh, through the redemption uh, that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, and you know what? When you think about that today, uh, you say, Preacher, the Bible says, For all have sinned, uh, all have come short. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but you know what makes the difference? Uh, it is Jesus tonight. Uh, and notice on what he says, uh, Whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith uh, in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins uh, that are past uh, through the forbearance of God uh, uh, to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just uh, and the justifier of him which believeth in Christ uh, uh, think about this tonight uh, uh, where would you be uh, if it hadn't been for Jesus uh, uh, where would you have been uh, if Jesus hadn't intervened in your life uh, uh, think about this uh, I was thinking about old Paul uh, and how that he wrote many letters uh, uh, many of them become uh, uh, books in the New Testament uh, you know what you say preacher what changed uh, uh, that man's life uh, he met Jesus just like you did uh, and just like I did uh, and you know what and he changed uh, everything about him uh, you say preacher t uh, tonight uh, I know that people need change uh, I know that people uh, uh, they need to make things right with God uh, I know that there are people uh, that don't have any peace about them. Uh, you say, preacher, what do you do? Uh, uh, just point them to the cross. Uh, uh, point them to Jesus. Uh, uh, tell them uh, uh, what Jesus can do. Uh, uh, listen, I was thinking about uh, how that those uh, uh, disciples that were following Jesus, uh, he put them on that ship uh, and he told them to go to the other side. Uh, and we know the story. <laughs> excuse me, how that when they get out in the middle of the sea, uh, uh, there was a storm that arose, uh, and it shook that boat, uh, and it throwed it each, every which way it could go, uh, and they was fear in their life. Uh, they tried doing everything that they could, uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, Jesus had his eye on them uh, the entire time. Amen. Uh, and you know, this life, uh, it seems like every time uh, you turn the TV on, uh, it's bad news. Uh, you turn it on at lunch, uh, it's bad news. Uh, you turn it on at night. Uh, it's more bad news. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, Jesus still has his eye on you and I tonight. You know, I don't know when. It's going to be a wonderful day when we can all look back and we get this COVID behind us. Amen. I'm so sick of this stuff. I'm so sick of being told what to do, what not to do, who's right, who's wrong. I just want all that stuff behind us. But do you know that in through all of this that's been going on, I mean, there's been chaos, there's been riots, there's been fights. He's never took his eyes off of his children. His love for you has not ever changed. His care has never changed. And you know what? I know a lot of people uh, in this life, they lose a lot of sleep over bad news. I, I work with people, and you know what? They'll get, th th these things start happening, and, th and th they'll lose sleep over, over what this one said or what that one said, and they get consumed with all these different things. But I know this. I've got peace with God, and it come through believing, having faith, in Jesus Christ. Bobby, you got a song to play for us tonight? A definition I found while studying for 
peace. And it was defined as this. Taking action to restore a broken situation. You know, uh, there can be many different types of broken situations. There can be broken situations in a home. They can be broken situations in relationships, friendships, families. They can be broken relationships in churches. There can be broken relationships on the job. They can be broken relationships in, the, in school, wherever it may be. But the definition, I like one, taking action to restore a broken situation. Now think about this for a minute. Who sinned in the Garden of Eden? It was man. Even though he tried to blame it on the serpent. Then he tried to blame it on God. Said, you know what? You gave me that woman. It's her fault. It was us. It was man. Who took the most action to correct it? God. That amazed me when he laid that on my heart. God took the most action to correct a broken situation. Say, preacher, what action did he take? He sent his only begotten son so that through him we can have peace with God. And you know what? When you think about that gift that God gave, he gave his very best to fix a broken situation. You know, there's many times had friends, family, co-workers, people you go to church with and I'm just using this as, as an example I'm not I'm not trying to point out or anything or call anybody or anything it's just it's just an example but sometimes there's problems within a marriage sometimes there's a problem that can't they can't be reconciled and you say preacher what's happened well there's a broken situation there something's happened in order to reconcile that marriage and bring it back together there has to be something that's there to restore. And it has to work on two parts. It's not just one-sided. It's two parts. So when you think about that as an example, when it comes between us and God, guess what? There's two parts. God has already provided His part, His action in Jesus. The rest is on us. Let's stand tonight Page three ninety six. as we sing. 396. <clears throat> when my way groweth near, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my Precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my good to be in the Lord's house tonight. It's good to see each and every one of you all out here with us tonight. Thankful uh, that we've got a good place to come and worship the Lord, a good place that uh, you know that we can come and get out of the world for just a little bit and take our mind and worries and things off the world and and just solely put them upon on the Lord and thank Him and praise Him for what He's done. I'm looking forward to next week. I don't know about you. I can't wait for it to get here. Uh, get Sunday school, training union again, uh, just, you know, get to, I love Sunday school, by the way, and you say, preacher, why is that? Well, that's where you get to learn. You grow a lot in Sunday school, uh, in the lessons and things that are taught, and you get to share with one another uh, some things as well. So you be in prayer for our Sunday school, you be in prayer for our training union, pray for our services, and uh, you know what?
uh, we need to just pray for the lost most importantly. So don't ever forget to pray for the lost. Ask Brother Jerry if he dismisses some prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the message that you sent through Alan for us today. We pray, dear God, that we can use it in our everyday life. We pray, dear God, there was a lot of prayer requests that was mentioned tonight. We all need you, Lord. We need you all the time. Always will. And God, we're so thankful that you'll hear our prayers, dear God. And I pray that you'll keep our hearts in tune so we can hear it. God, I pray that you'll be with us next week and you bring us back and give us a safe journey home. God, thank you for everything that you've done for me. I love you, Lord. Forgive me when I fail you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.